I had a question. I mean, I kind of want to just bring it up. Like, the recent Balenciaga stuff that's going on. There's evil where it's demonstrated right in front of your eyes mm-hmm. and they don't even try to hide it. Does the Quran <laughs> mention anything like that about watching out for evil specifically? Not like strategies to like avoid it, but does it mm-hmm. say anything about like the strategies that these current people are using to push clear evil and stuff that's clearly against the will of God? Yes, there, there are instances of that. For example, Allah mentioned the Quran. Um, there's a few different examples. The people that, you know, co- cause corruption in the earth. And then when you go to them and say you're causing corruption, they say, that no, we're just instilling peace. We're just instilling peace. You know, and these people will come. They'll be like, no, we're just we're just fighting for rights. We're just fighting for basic human rights. Well, that's what they and, say. Yeah, it's crazy. But they're really hiding something demonic under this guise of human rights. But Islam will say, well, you know, your rights... Who determines what a right is? You're just making it up and then saying you're fighting for this thing you made up, all while hiding this demonic thing. Allah also mentions in the Quran people who would be punished. And why are they punished? Because they put themselves into bad predicaments. You know, people like, I'm uh, guys like, I'm going to go preach the message outside of a nightclub. It's like, bro, like you're literally one step away from being inside this demonic hall. And this is where you want to go preach the message. Like, yeah, they need it. But is that the circumstance you as a person should be putting yourself in? Not necessarily. I would say same thing with, you know, maybe going to some of these fashion conventions or to some of these concerts. And I know you had a, a very specific opinion on concerts, Sonny. And I, I love that take. Um, for those of you who don't know, Sonny, I, I believe is against concerts because it's cringe to go, just jump, bob your head up and down like a loser. Uh, it's, it's really cringe, honestly. It's just a waste of time. Um, and there are probably some I'm not remembering currently but it's literally all over the quran but the best summary to make as fast as possible is anything that god tells us is good um is something that's beneficial to us and will be good for us and we should enjoy those things anything that is haram that is evil that is wrong we should avoid it and and as for the measures we should take to avoid it um the best best measure is prevention completely complete prevention that's why people will see islam as strict but it's, it's not really strict in, in, in all honesty. It's just we're so loose as a society. We don't care what we do. Uh, you can literally, the government will let you drink till you kill yourself. And it doesn't really matter to them. Islam will say, no, anything that intoxicates you in large amounts, you cannot even have a little bit of it. So, wow. It's, that's, it's really interesting you say that point because I've kind of felt the same way where they do a lot of this stuff with the Trojan horse. So they'll say it's just for acceptance. It's just for mental health. And that's why they're giving hormones to kids. And it's oh, like, God. that's that the, the excuses they use is, is a pretty much perfect analogy of what you just said. Yeah, and find and when you're young and even when you're older, you know, you can be fooled by causes mm-hmm. and they, and, and they, cause they are do like perfect becoming a Trojan horse. And so I think the way to avoid that, and I may just be repeating what you just said, Rami is just stay true to God and then you don't you don't put yourself on a path where you can come into contact with a Trojan horse at all. Avoidance. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, what mm-hmm. do I say? Nothing. Every every mother says this. Nothing good happens after nine o'clock out, you know, mm-hmm. so stay in the house, at, you know, come home. Uh, and, yeah. and that's kind of a, a simplistic way of, of, you know, staying out of trouble. Mm-hmm. And staying away from those evil things. But the Balenciaga thing, I think, was just so so outrageously atrocious you couldn't even make it up no, the level no. of detail they went to to promote child pornography and that's just and, like the most clear evil that there is so it's so it's just mm. crazy to see that that's like one of the biggest fashion companies that's what their, their real motives are like i still can't believe that that's that was a real th- a real story that wasn't just a scene in a in a in a weird movie mm-hmm. yeah how about you, bro? But the thing is, man, this is we shouldn't even be surprised by this, you know. And we we shouldn't even look to see, uh, or what what is said in religions about these things. I mean, we just need to use our clear judgment, our own eyes. Like we can see these things in front of our eyes. When I was younger, I'm not that old, by the way. Let me say that. You but when I was, uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. When I was younger, I would go to these festivals. I would go to these things like EDC. You know what EDC is, right? Yep. Bro, I went to EDC. And let me tell you something. Everyone there is on drugs. Mm-hmm. Either they're on drugs or they're drinking. And, bro, that I was at this one stadium where it's like, okay, the music was nice at the time. But as we're, like, jumping, as we're dancing, everyone's, like, everyone looks like NPC characters. Yeah, they're bots. <laughs> yeah. Bro, everyone's like, ah. I, I jumping like this i'm like what the hell is wrong with these people and as 
bro, as this is happening, there's random things that are popping up on the stage. People aren't like they're not catching on to it because they're so far gone. Something else mm-hmm. is controlling them at that point in time, whether they're drinking or whether they're on a substance, something else is controlling them. When I was there on the stage, clear as night and day, bro. Do you know what Baphomet is? Have you no. ever heard of Baphomet? No. no. Baphomet, write that down. Do your research on that. That is, I think it's some kind of like, demon or something that these people worship they were showing baphomet just right on the stage like this and i'm literally like i stopped dancing and i'm looking at this thing and i'm just looking around to see if anyone else is like catching this no one else was catching it because again everyone's like off somewhere else and from that moment in time i was like whoa there's something really messed up happening here and i started doing my own research turns out that that's not the first thing and it keeps going deeper and deeper and deeper. And it's not just in festivals, bro. It's everywhere in the world. So it's like the Balenciaga stuff. So Nike had something at one point. Like, bro, and no matter where you go, like, it, it's, these are signs that show us that we are in the end of times or we are nearing the end of times. So it's, again, like, we don't, we don't need something or someone to tell us this. It's just, we just look for ourselves and we can see it. What see, is a, the lot end of people, of time? a lot of people oh, ask okay. these Oh, I was just going to wrap it up with uh, his point with a lot of people ask these questions like you see Lil Nas X giving Satan a lap dance. Is it really that obvious? Isn't that too like do you guys really believe in Satan and this? And one of the tricks or one of the main ideas or intentions of the devil is to convince the world that he doesn't exist. Yeah. So in a way, it really has to be kind of out in plain sight. Mm, that's a really good point. Mm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's really interesting because I used to look at that stuff as kind of just like eh, whatever. Like, it's just them, their culture, uh, not their culture, but I wouldn't look at it as a, as big of a deal. And then I'd see older people getting really mad at that stuff. And I kind of didn't understand why they got so mad. Yeah. And then now when you look deeper and you're like, wow, it's 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 not just like coincidence that he's dancing on the devil. Like there's true evil behind that stuff. And it really does change your whole perspective on it. Next stream, inshallah, God willing, we can talk about Christmas, too, because I want to know your take on Christmas, you know. Santa Claus and all this, even as a kid, I would always wonder. I was like, my parents and like, you know, everything I was taught about Islam, we learned that, you know, Allah, God knows all you do if you're good or you're bad, if you're a you're good boy or a naughty boy, whatever they make Santa, you know, Santa Claus be. And they're like, you know, we have to pray to Allah and then Allah will give us what we want. And then when I go to school, they're telling us this is what we got to do with Santa Claus. We got to write letters to Santa, which is kind of like a dua, but, you know, it's not right. So you're, you're making a prayer to something that doesn't even exist i'm sure no kid growing up really believed in santa claus but you know they use all this music too jingle bells you know what i mean it's like it gets you into that flow and it's yearly you know what i mean so forget just the financial thing Mm. too but it's it's idolatry at the end Mm. of the day Muslims in Norway are now establishing a masjid and dawa center to enhance the Norwegian dawa. If you donate to this cause, you will inshallah reap the rewards of thousands of Muslims coming back to Islam and many of those who become du'at and invite to Islam. So click the link and donate now and share the video for extra rewards.